cookie swirl? See? <laughs> Welcome, class is about ready to get started. Go ahead and take your seat. Woo, chocolatey chippy cookies. Ooh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're gonna be learning about the body <gasps> with organic science. Get it, organ? Organic? Yeah. All right, this super awesome science kit lets you totally explore the body. Check it out, oh yes. With all of these body parts and they are squishy, squishy, squishy. Ooh, you can pick up the body parts with the forceps and put them into their right place inside of the body. And there is an activity book that lets you discover even more about the body. Yeah, you can use the organizer. Yeah, you can use the organizer to organize the organs. Smart lab. Check out the skeleton here. Oh, the squishy human body actually has a little squishy try me right here. Whoa, you could totally feel the intestines right here on the skeleton. All right, so let's check out this squishy human body. Ooh. Here is the skeleton. Look at the clear body that it's in. It's really cool. You can see bones and muscles at the same time. Dip, 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 dip. Whoa, check it out. So, so cool. So here we have this huge skeleton that's actually a little bit taller than Barbie. So let's go ahead and get the display stand out. Ooh, here we've got some tools that it comes with. So we've got some forceps that are curved and some tweezers. Uh... Oh, that's right, Gulia. Do not forget the organ chart. Let's get organized. It's time to get organized. Ooh, so here we have our organizer chart. So we can make sure we have all of the body part pieces. Let's take our body now and get it all taken apart. Ooh, ew, peel back this first layer and take out the intestines. Ew, they are gummy and squishy. Oh, I wonder if this is how they would really feel. And ew, look at it. Ew, it kind of sticks to me. All right, here we have the intestines. Ugh. What else do we have in here? Oh, ooh. Ew, let's pick out, ew, the kidneys. Come on out, kidneys. Ew, 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 they're just so sticky. Eek. Kidneys, there we go. Ew, sticky. There they are. We have this piece hanging down, the diaphragm. Ooh. Place right on here. What else do we have? Is this the stomach? Ooh, ooh, there's the stomach. Stomach, oh, wait, that says brain. Stomach, ew. Now we have our liver. Ew, everything's coming out, oh no. Oh, well that just made it easier. So here's the liver, all squishy, right there. The heart, ugh. the esophagus, and ugh, big giant set of lungs. Ooh, look at how squishy these ones are. And they're stretchy. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and take up this whole entire skeleton apart. All right, so we're gonna open up the clear skin. So we have the rib cage right here. We have an arm, Whoop. a very muscly leg. Leg muscle. Let's open up the skeleton now. So we've got, ooh, ooh. We've got two shoulder blades, our spine, pelvis bone. Get out the leg bones, ooh, ooh. There's the femur right there. More leg bones and your feet bones. Tibia and fibia, foot bones. Eh. Humerus bone. Humerus, the radius and the ulna make up your arm Ooh. and your hand. Ooh, can't forget that. High five. Whoop. Almost have everything organized. Now we just need our skeleton skull. Ooh, Ooh there's the skull. And we can actually open it up and ew, there's the brain. Big squishy brain is in there. Go ahead and pluck that on out. Oh, whoa. All right, that brain has some serious, serious detail. Ooh. We'll put the skull, the brain, and skull cap. Everything looks good. All right, now we can get started in putting together this super clear human. All right, class, I'd like everyone to notice the skin that completely covers the whole entire body. Your skin is your largest organ. It keeps all of your body parts inside of you. And skin also has a special function. It regulates your body temperature. It cools you down by making you sweat whenever you get overheated. Oh, sweat is just like water. Ugh, not water I drink. So let's start putting together the skeleton because without a skeleton, you would just be a big blob. Yes, but I'd be a perfect blob. All right, so Let's take our little clear human, open it back up. 
whoop, and start filling in our skeleton. So we're gonna need our main core piece here. Ooh, the spine and the back of the rib cage. Your backbone consists of 33 bones that are all stacked together just like blocks. Now you can actually see them all stacked right here to make up your spine. Whoa, and good thing it's super flexible which allows us to bend back and forth. And the hip bones are also shaped kind of like a bowl shape. They hold all of your guts in. So you can totally see that bowl shape right here in between your hip bones. And on the back here, we can actually put our little shoulder blades. Just snap these bone pieces on. Whoop. There's one, and here's the other one. So this way, the skeleton will be able to move its shoulders. These shoulder blades allow us to move our arms. Because they're not actually attached to the rib cage, that's what allows you to really have movement of your arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap this on in. Shoulder blade. So let's build our arm now. So the first bone that we have that is attached to our shoulder is the humerus bone. So we're gonna put the humerus bone right on in, right there. These two bones actually make up your lower arm bone. And of course your hand bone lets you grab things, such as this clear skeleton toy. Now let's go on to our leg bones. So here is the femur, which is the largest bone in our bodies, because it makes up our long, long legs and allows us to actually move our legs around because of this little ball joint that it has. The two bones that make up the lower leg are kind of similar to the arm bones because we've got two bones here, the tibia and the fibia. They're just longer than the arm bones. Ooh, and you can see the little kneecap right on there too for bending and moving. And can't forget to have your foot bone step on in, which look at that, how detailed that is. Woo, very good, everything looks good. You know you have 26 bones in each foot. There we go, so now we've got bones on one side of the body. Now on the other side, we need some muscles. Don't worry, Gulia, I won't forget about the skull bones. So now we're gonna put in the muscles, which are so important because these bones wouldn't be moving without muscles. So we got this super duper detailed leg muscle. Oh, you can see so many muscles going on and you can see this big vein running all up and down the leg. Very important to get lots of lots of blood pumped through these muscles so they can really move. So we're gonna slide this muscly leg right in here. Very good, hello. Whoop, we gotta get our hand in there too. So here you can actually see a bunch of nerves running through it. And look at how many muscles it takes in the arm to make our arms move. Whoa! So in our body, we actually have three types of muscles. One of them called skeletal muscle, which is muscles that you actually move, like you can make your arm move up and down. Another one is smooth muscles, which we don't control, like the muscles in our stomach, which helps us digest food. We don't control those, so they move all on their own. And then there's cardiac muscle, cardiac meaning heart. Your heart muscle also we don't control. It moves on its own, which is very important to have your heart keep beating. Put our hand right on in here and our arm. And the skeleton is looking pretty good. Now let's get into how the body moves the muscles with the brain. Ooh, now we get to put the skull together. So we're gonna need our skull, the skull cap and this super squishy brain. So here we actually have a very detailed skull. We're gonna take this brain, which is so important. This is what makes us, us. The brain controls everything. Right now your brain is thinking about brains. Whoop. Look at how stretchy, 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 stretchy. Your brain is the softest, squishiest body part of all. Oh, I can see that. Ooh. Put the brain inside of the skull right here. Put on the skull cap, because we want to protect that brain. Make sure it's nice and safe. So we need a nice hard skull to keep it all safe since it's so squishy. Now we can put it right here on top of the skeleton. And now that the brain is attached, the brain can connect with a bunch of nerves that make the body move and it can sense everything that's going on. Brainy. Like this kid eating this yummy taste of pizza. Brain is detecting that, whoop, we are holding a glass and I'm hungry. So it signals you to eat. All right, so let's get ready now to put in some lungs. Our first organ in the body. We'll grab these squishy, squishy lungs. Ah. Whoa. Oh, these are really realistic looking. There is so much detail going on here. You can actually see the two lobes on one side and the three on the other side. And when you turn them around, you can see the spaces that the lungs have to leave room for other organs. And they're stretchy. Whoop. Ooh, stretchy, stretchy. Ooh. So let's grab this piece. So let's put these lungs right in here, which brings in oxygen from the environment right into the body. Ooh, there we go, nice and stretchy right there. How does the air get into the body? The air gets into your body, either through your nose or your mouth when it's breathed in, 
and it goes down your throat into a tube called the trachea. Ooh, we got that piece right here. So this actually has the trachea and the esophagus. So you can see both of the tubes that go down to the stomach here. So when you breathe, air goes down into the trachea. But what is this tube for? The tube on the backside is actually for food to go down. Here this person's eating some yummy pizza. Nom, 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 nom. And down through the esophagus. And this little epiglottis that keeps your trachea closed to only keep air in there. But while you're breathing, it opens up so you can put air inside. And it's so stretchy, stretchy gummy. Woo. Put this little piece, woo, wiggle it right into place right here. Bring it right on up here. Because this little piece right here is your voice box that helps you talk like me talking right now. That piece right there is helping me talk. <laughs> now to help that air get into the lungs, we're gonna need the diaphragm. Woo. So this thin, flat muscle is located in the rib cage, and this helps draw air into the lungs. So we'll position it right here underneath the lungs, just like that. Okay, so the air goes through the lungs, but now how does it get into the body? Now we're gonna need the heart. Grab our little squishy heart here. So here is the heart, which is a very, very, very important muscle that pumps nutrient-rich blood to every part of your body. Squishy, 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 squishy heart. You can see that the heart is actually shaped at an angle, and it is more on the left side of your body. You can see that it actually has all of these tubes that go to different parts of the body. So now into the lungs, all of that air is in here. And you can see really, really close here that these little tiny sacs at the end of these lung branches actually have a bunch of blood vessels, so the oxygen passes through the lungs right into the blood. So all of those oxygen molecules go into the blood, and from there they take an amazing trip. They go right into the heart from both sides of the lungs through the little tubes that you can actually see on the heart here. Whoop. Oxygenated blood then goes pump through the heart. It gets a big squeeze from the heart and whoo, goes out into the body. So there would be a lot of blood inside of these little tubes. Woo! Did you know that your heart is about the size of your fist? Whoa, that's cool. Gross alert. Yep, that's right. If you have any scabs on your body, that is your body's own bandage made out of dried blood. The skin underneath is trying to heal underneath all that dried blood. And you got to make sure you drink lots of water because your blood is made out of water. Yep, blood is about 83% water. So you always wanna make sure you're drinking enough. Let's put this little gummy heart in here now. So we're gonna move it right about here so it looks a little bit tucked underneath this diaphragm here. It's a snug fit, but there is space for it right in between both the lungs. So now let's follow that piece of food all the way down into the stomach. So we need that gummy little stomach here. Ooh, which here we have it. Ooh, you can see it's definitely like sack shaped. Ooh, what's going on inside of this stomach? The stomach's job is to break down your food. So if you eat a cookie, it comes into the stomach all chewed up from your teeth. But how do you actually break it down? Well, the stomach has to make a really strong acid to break up all the food down. Ooh, so the stomach has to squeeze its muscles together and that muscle squeezing mixes all the food with that stomach acid and that helps break the food down. Ew. Stretchy, stretchy, stretchy. Well, whatever food's in here would be really broken down now, woo! Woo! Stomach acid can sting if it decides to come back up. Yuck. That's why whenever you throw up, your throat actually burns because of the stomach acid. Well, how come the stomach then doesn't just burn itself? Ooh, here's a look inside of the stomach and you can actually see that there is a thick, thick layer of like this mucusy slime that covers the inside of the stomach. Therefore, your stomach is protected from its own stomach acid. So now let's follow that cookie from the stomach now to the rest of the body. The stomach then now flows into the small intestines. Whoa, which doesn't look so small from here. Come on. Ugh. Ew, here are the intestines, and they're actually small because of the size that they are around, but they're actually quite long. Check it out. We can start pulling some of it out. Oh, here it goes. Come on out, small intestine. That's really actually long. Ew. Ew! Woo! So here is just a tiny example of the small intestine, which totally is all coiled and wrapped up inside of our stomach, just like that. Woo! Or like that. You can see it's actually framed by the large intestine, which is a lot thicker, but a lot shorter. So here's the large intestine totally around the small intestine here. Ooh! 
So a piece of it is actually connected to the stomach, so that cookie then goes into the small intestines to get broken down even further. So stretchy. So as that food makes its way through the small intestine, it actually gets absorbed into the bloodstream, so then it can be used by the body, and it will make its way to the liver. Uh, what happens to the food that you don't use? Any unused food then goes through the large intestine, but water gets sucked out of the food, and then it makes its way down to here, which is the... That's what it is when you go to the bathroom. Everything that your body didn't need anymore. Oh! But what about the food that you did need? Well, now all of that food now is inside of the bloodstream because it got absorbed inside of the small intestines. Once the food gets absorbed, now it's off to the liver. So here we're gonna take our liver. Woo, perfect. Now that the food has now all been broken down and is in the blood, it goes through the liver now. Stretchy liver. So here is the stomach and then it went through the whole thing of the intestines. Now that it's in the blood, it goes through the liver and now your liver is actually going to filter out the nutrients and send them to the heart to be used so the heart can pump them throughout the whole entire body. So here's the stomach and you can actually see that it actually has a little cutout shape right there that can actually fit the back of the liver. Do you see how it's kind of shaped like that? They kind of perfectly shape around each other just like that. Whoop the perfect fit. Well, what about those kidneys? Don't they filter water? That's right, the kidneys are also a filtering system. Let's grab our kidneys and our bladder here. So the kidneys also filter out the blood and they remove waste from the blood as well. So it can be eliminated from the body. So you can see blood is coming in from the heart, goes into the kidneys here. Then all of these little guys right here, which are called nephrons, actually filter out the blood. What it wants to keep, whoop, it goes back to the heart. What it doesn't want to keep, it actually flows down into here through the ureter and goes whoop, all the way down into your bladder. So we can see these little filtering kidneys and our bladder right here, which yep, you guessed it. It was filled with pee. Oh! So now on our little skeleton here, we're gonna actually put the kidneys in because they're right here in the back. So we'll put them right here. Make sure our bladder actually goes down into our pelvis here. Whoop. We gotta put our stomach and our liver in here. Now we gotta keep all of these body parts completely protected because if we get hit or something right here, woo, we would really be hurting our major organs. So we gotta protect it with our rib cage. So rib cage gets snapped on. Ah, the stomach fell out, no! There we go, so the rib cage will keep our lungs and our heart super duper safe. So if you accidentally get hit here, it only hits your rib cage and your sternum, this bone right here. Then I'm gonna squiggle in our intestines right on in here, just like that. Woo, perfect! Now we have our squishy, soft intestines ready to digest some more food. Snap everything together by a protective layer of skin to keep everything in the body together. So that is your organs inside of this human body all wrapped up in our protective skin, which an adult skin alone weighs about six pounds. Whoa, skin is kind of heavy. And now we have traveled completely inside of the human body and looked at all of those organs. Uh-oh, the intestines is trying to come out a little bit. Nope, go back in there. There you go, right in there. Woo. All right, good job, class. I hope you learned something about the human body today. Our bodies are absolutely amazing. Make sure you give it plenty of water to keep your body running smooth and happy. Does anyone have any questions? All right, class, looks like your excuse for lunch. I will see you in the next science lesson. Oh, I really have to go to the bathroom now. Oh, why is that an ill? Because now I know how it works. I'm gonna go drink some water. That's right, Gloria. We'll see the cookie fans in my next video. Bye, cookies! Stay super duper 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 squishy. Woohoo! that there was a student who was so excited about learning about the human body, they couldn't wait to digest their own food. Which Monster High student was eating this cookie? Was it Laguna, Cleo, Guya, or Claudine?